Hi everyone. Um, welcome to the second panel of uh, the first Digital Eco Fashion Week uh, produced by uh, designtobuy.com, B2B. Uh, this panel would be about the future of sustainable fashion uh, uh, materials and processes. And uh, our moderator would be uh, Vika uh, Kaner, which uh, from uh, Refresh and uh, Vika, Let's start. Sure. Um, thank you, Ori. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, anytime I have an opportunity to talk about uh, sustainability and uh, its impact, which will hopefully it will happen on the fashion industry, it's, a, it's an exciting moment. Um, so uh, maybe the other panelists can also open their cameras so we can uh, see you and hear you. Um, okay, so we have three panelists with us here today, and uh, not only they all work in different areas, they also are based in very different areas. So this is a truly international event, um, and uh, I think that the best way to present each other is when you do it yourself, uh, but uh, just quickly so that everybody knows, we're Vincent here from Shanghai, from China. We have Renee and another fan here with, uh, I don't know who runs the show on your end, <laughs> I guess the boss in, uh, in Vancouver, the, just wake, woke up, I assume, right? Something like that. It's very to wake up now. <clears throat> and we have Eleanor. I think, Eleanor, you have to bring your own now, right? Uh, you all yeah, I you. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I think that um, as long as your two bosses uh, haven't uh, taken over yet, how about you start and present your work? You're a designer and uh -huh. you're also now have become, of course, not just a designer, but also a businesswoman. Uh, it's very exciting. So um, I think what would be interesting if you talk about your path as a designer, your idea to do something that is... Uh, uh, not only sustainable, but basically cor corresponds uh, to circle economy. And also, how tell maybe a bit about your experience, what it means actually to start and uh, manage um, a sustainable brand these days. Okay, so I will tell a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Elinor Netanel. Uh, I'm based here in Israel. And uh, my brand called Rement. We are actually uh, producing uh, textiles out of plastic, uh, out of uh, single-use uh, plastic. We are working with factories uh, and uh, use also the post-consumer uh, leftovers. Um, we are using uh, very un unconventional uh, materials, raw materials such as uh, bubble wrap and uh, aluminum and laminated uh, material that uh, are very problematic uh, to recycle today. And uh, of course, materials that uh, does not uh, is not biodegradable. Uh, Sorry, my son is here. So, um, and uh, we are coloring it by ourselves. Then we are making it a, a textile which is a highly durable, waterproof, and uh, easy to clean, and uh, com that comes with a, a lot of uh, textures, shades and colors and uh, it's really really interesting all the all the process and the result is very interesting uh, and we are really proud on what we are doing because we we like to uh, to give it a second chance because we are not uh, those, those are very problematic materials actually so uh, my background is a textile designer i learned in shankar here in israel and there i started with the first material that was a uh, bubble wrap and uh, then uh, we keep developing and developing all the other materials and we are keeping developing this uh, because we really like the result of, uh, of the fabrics. And we are working with a lot of designers, uh, international and here in Israel that uh, are producing uh, bags out of it and clothes and um, a lot of things. Um, so um, tell us a bit more about really how it is to start and to, to manage and lead a brand from scratch also. Um, Israel is a small market, so um, uh, you probably, um, from right away, your vision wasn't 
uh, only to focus on, on the Israeli market. What is it that, you know, um, maybe you can even say, are there more challenges? Are there more opportunities if you come from a smaller market? Tell us about your experience, um, you know, what it means to, to do it. Okay, so uh, first we started here in Israel. We wanted to, to hear uh, what people thinking about it. And uh, we started with a very small collection of bags that we produce. And uh, we saw that people really like the, how it look. And, uh, and then we, uh, now we are working with uh, the USA market. Uh, we are producing a bag for uh, one of the communities there. Uh, we are working also with a German designer, German shoe designer, which is very excited. And also it's here with Israel design, Bex uh, designer. And uh, we will tell you a little bit more when it will be ready. <laughs> it's taking um, a lot of time. Sounds, sounds very exciting. And uh, congratulations on uh, what you've already achieved so far. We will go back afterwards and talk all a bit more about um, you know, what it actually means to, to run a sustainable brand uh, specifically. Uh, but I think actually, Renee, you can talk a bit about more about that, uh, what it means to run a sustainable marketplace. I think what you do is more than just uh, one brand. You really have a, a beautiful marketplace you've built. So please tell us about your background and how you do it. Yeah, it's sure. about let um, you. Yeah, I mean, we, we mainly have one brand that we um produce um so the the brand's ecologist um we we make all of our products here in canada a lot of them done in our own our own factory uh where we are right now well actually i'm at home right now <laughs> but in in uh victoria which is on vancouver island um near vancouver for those of people that don't know this part of the world that well um but uh yeah i've been in the clothing game for about 20 years now, uh, produced in uh, China, Indonesia, Japan, um, India, and then more recently we moved all our production back to Canada uh, just to try to get it as close as possible to um, where we're selling it. Um, we only uh, make our products using natural fibers, which um, is a challenge for a company that's uh you know uh, specializing in outdoor clothing products uh but um you know kind of a exciting one for us to take on and an important uh important uh, one for us as well okay yeah. very interesting can you talk a bit more about uh, the process of actually moving back production or maybe move, not even back actually moving right i assume the, the production to, to canada how did it all how long did it take what was the experience uh, yeah that happened in uh or at least we started the process in 2014 it took it took a couple of years like we actually used to have offices in in guangzhou china and we were, most of our production was was done around there um, but, uh, it, you know, it was just something that <clears throat> we felt was, was the right thing to do for us. Um, we're not like a massive company, so keeping an eye on things, making sure things are being done well, making sure the people making our products are being treat treated fairly, um, was not easy producing overseas. Um, and that was a big reason for, for us bringing things, uh, to Canada. Um, just having the confidence that that the people making our products are actually being paid properly to do so. Um, <clears throat> and then in that process, though, quickly realizing that the capability of uh, the, the factories here in Canada are, are pretty limited compared to what they are uh, in China and, and in other countries. Um, so that that's what really pushed us to open up our own factory here so that we could make the products that, that we used to make um, there, there are a few companies that, and, and a few factories here in Canada that, that um, do some really great work, but there's, uh, <laughs> there's companies like uh, Canada Goose, as example, they kind of like grab all the, all the uh, production space in those facilities. So yeah, it really forced us to, and, and I'm happy that it did to open up our own factory. Wow. 
Okay, so let's move over to, to Vincent. You, um, um, I think I assume that your perspective is very global. You are based in um, pretty much the heart where it all happens. Uh, yeah. One of the most important uh, right, areas for, for textile production. Uh, but you uh, also, um, from what I understand, you look very much, you have a very global perspective nonetheless. Um, and you're focused on fashion innovation. So maybe um, tell us, of course, first of all, about your background and your work and, and how you operate and uh, what it means to you to do fashion innovation. Yeah, so uh, I'm Vincent, I'm based in uh, Shanghai. So uh, I have uh, three businesses, two mainly. So my main one of it is uh, Chenko. It's a uh, family business started by my parents in Hong Kong in 1975 and then what we do is uh to now we manufacture uh outdoor out outerwear like uh down jackets uh, padded jackets windbreakers or coats for uh European brands mainly uh more on the premium side the European brands uh, and then uh, we source, we go from fabric to the uh, end garment. So we ship final products to them. Uh, the other one is um, uh, uh, Remake Hub. So what we do at Remake Hub is that we turn trash into uh, something useful again. So we have uh, turned fishing nets into sunglasses. It was a project done with uh, WWF Australia and uh, Arise Collections, uh, some glasses brand in Australia. So that was quite interesting, quite fun. And then now we're also uh, working on turning, um, uh, using actually uh, some of the textile waste, uh, dead stocks actually, turning them into something, uh, give, them a, give them a new life again, something like uh, upcycling, or uh, turn them into uh, new products like uh, shoes into yoga mats and and some some things like that. Yeah. And another thing I do is uh, I regularly do um, coaching for uh, fashion startups. So I work with uh, uh, Impact Hub in Shanghai and some other local uh, organizations that uh, focus on fashion. Uh, startups, fashion innovation startups, or uh, sustainable fashion startups. So I do um, some coaching, mentoring for them. And uh, I'm in this business for 15 years. So, but I kind of grew up in a, in a tex textile fine family since uh, even my grandparents were, were in, in, uh, in this industry. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we have really a lot of very interesting perspective, very different perspectives mm -hmm. here. So just a quick announcement, whoever wants to ask questions, um, feel free to use the chat and uh, we'll try to, um, uh, to get back to you uh, um, towards the end. Hopefully there will be some time for it. But in the meantime, I will get to ask the questions. Um, so I, I know that uh, one of uh, the, big, the big topic of this panel is, of course, uh, we're discussing uh, what is a sustainable material. And we'll get mm -hmm. to this in a moment. Um, I have to ask, of course, um, first the big question, almost like the elephant, elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like each panelist to say, um, how did the last month impact your business? Um, and especially even as, you know, many, um, many people, especially in the fashion industry, they, uh, um, you hear, you know, you hear them still say, okay, all we want is for the world to go back the way it was, right? We just want this, all, this whole thing to finish and we just want it to be the way mm -hmm. it used to be. Um, I don't know, maybe we can judge them because, you know, if it went all well for them, that's, that's just fine. But I think that most people, of course, especially the ones that want to bring upon sustainability, um, have been saying that, no, we cannot go to the back to that world the way it used to be. So I would love to hear everyone's opinion on that. How do you see it? Uh, should we aspire to bring the world back to the way it was? Um, what does it mean for your own business? And what does it mean, you know, have you had any of those moments where you said, okay, I know I cannot continue doing the things the way I used to. 
um, and I will now do it differently and I will be able to overcome the challenges. So whoever wants to start. But maybe Vincent, because you guys, you know, this is where it all started. So you, you have even longer, you had longer time to reminisce about that. Yeah, so um, we, are, we are okay now. So, but um, I say it's when, when it all started, when uh, we started, the first thing we were worried about, could we ship the goods? Then later on, to, it went to um, uh, do, do the uh, clients want our goods? And, and, and then towards the later is like, are, would they be around to pay for, pay us? So it went into those three stages. Now it's more uh, things are, I don't say, I, I won't say it's getting back to normal. I don't think it will. I think it's, uh, there's still risk that uh, brands uh, are, are, are still are struggling to, to get back to on, their, on their feet. Um, but uh, if you say is uh, what I see is that um, brands with uh, e-commerce presence definitely are um, are are really the uh, the key driver for them to to survive through this thing, and uh, brands are cutting down collections for the coming coming years. Um, we have clients that are that have cut down all the collection size for the next year year and a half. Uh, there are brands that are stuck with lots and lots and lots of uh, 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 stocks, not just uh, finished made garments, but also uh, fabrics and trims and so on. And then a lot of them are fig trying to figure out, okay, what can we do with these? Definitely not burning them, definitely not throwing them away. How can we give them like a, a second life? And and there's a lot of uh, we, we have engaged with the many different brands to see okay what we can do to to that. And um, on on manufacturing side, I think uh, more or less back to normal. But the the, the demand is is not as strong as before. Even the local Chinese market, the the, the fashion brands uh, are, don't see the strong demand like before. So uh, definitely, it's 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 a different world now. Yeah. Well, uh, it does seem that uh, you seem to be an amazing, amazing source for for information, and I think that anybody that can get to hear from you uh, is lucky to to know you because I think you can uh, be a great consultant. It seems so, and uh, have a lot of experience. Very impressive. Um, does anybody else want to, uh, to share about how their work has been impacted? Yes. <laughs> so uh, right now, uh, it's really hard because uh, we yeah, here in Israel can't uh, get out of our homes. And I have two little kids at home. One is a year and a half and one is a three and a half. And I already had a, have a commitment and work, I need to keep working because uh, on the other side of the world, they are don't, uh, they are keeping uh, working uh, as usual. So this is the uh, one thing that is very hard for me. But I, I believe that uh, uh, if you like something and you really believe in this, so you are keep working and uh, and everything. Uh, and you find you find the creative ways to keep going, and uh, and I'm really happy. Uh, also, when I, we started uh, developing uh, Remand four years ago, uh, sustainability uh, was uh, under the uh, knowledge of everyone. Right now, when you say sustainability, people are more aware because of the COVID-19 and everything. So uh, they are more aware of what's happening in the environment and, uh, and how much we need uh, self-responsibility and uh, uh, how much creativity. Uh, I think the designers, have, uh, now are taking uh, uh, the first part, uh, everyone uh, counting on them because uh, they, they are bringing some innovative ways uh, to reduce, to recycle, to upcycling. And it's very important also. Okay, Rene, anything to add to that? Yeah, um, I mean, for us, we, we had to close our stores for a few months. That was a, you know, a big impact, uh, certainly had us like 
um, a lot of other brands focus uh, on, our, on our e-commerce channel and um, that that has been, you know, luckily going, going really well. Um, but we, you know, we, we had plans to open up other stores in the next few years. We won't, won't be doing that anymore. Um, <clears throat> I think also like a, a, there's been, or there's a big shift in um, consumers and, and what they're looking for. And I think Eleanor was touching on that a little bit and just seeing a lot of like, you know, reports coming from like the, the McKinsey's of, of the world um, talking about uh, thanks to COVID, um, people changing their shopping habits and looking to buy uh, less, um, but looking to buy higher higher quality. That seems to be like the number one shift. So to me, that that that's really positive. Um, obviously, there's there's a bunch of very sad stories. Um, in the world right now, but you know, that that's a really positive one coming out of this. Right. So, and, uh, as you were saying, you know, people now are looking for alternatives and, um, um, and, uh, one such big alternative seems to be really sustainable, sustainable material, sustainable fabrics, right. The sustainable, the, the approach itself to create, garments to create fashion to create textiles and you all have a lot to contribute to that um so let's talk about it let's talk about um you know what is what does it actually mean that world of tomorrow that we would all like to see more right in the fashion industry um where do we actually start this is basically the next question i would like to ask you both or you, the, the three of you because um, so we know that Eleanor, for instance, what she does, her approach is to take something which already exists in the world, right, and uh, which is generally seen as waste, and she, uh, and she has found a new alternative to, to, create, um, uh, to create a new fabric out of it. It's the ultimate, I guess, upcycling uh, method um, to, to reuse uh, waste, plastic waste. But then there's, of course, the question, you know, many will say, okay, but we, this is not enough because we want um, the planet to have less and less plastic. Um, and there's like always the question between, okay, what should we focus on, right? Should we focus on actually creating uh, completely biodegradable materials, compostable materials, should we invest our, you know, our strength and, and money into that and ask others to do, or should we look into, um, um, into you know the ways that already exist and find uh, new methods for that. Um, this is question number one. The question number two is: um, You all are designers or you know um, are experts in the industry, um, and you know that a good product will only or let's put it like this: a product will only be attractive if it really can be um, the design is attractive, if the fabric feels nice, it looks nice. So there's all these challenges that um, I think that, you know, one needs to ask themselves if a, a sustainable fabric can deliver that as much as a synthetic fabric um, and what's the take on it. So whoever wants to start first, maybe Vincent again, because you uh, kind of have also a more global picture on that. Okay. Um, right now, what I see is from our customers and for more people are is uh, where a lot of brands are really moving into like recycled polyester like polyester from uh, RPV from these uh, used bottles uh, BCI cotton is really the it's it's really become like the cotton you you are using now and then um, Tencel and Ecovero are really really big uh, especially I see that in from Europe. Uh, Naya is growing re very rapidly. A lot of brands are using Naya, but it's a bit expensive. Uh, so there's a lot, a lot of uh, new uh, sustainable materials out there entering the market and doing uh, 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 working with different brands. Um, and there's also some brands are, are a bit... Uh, uh, forward they they will look into these uh, bio bio based uh, uh, plastic uh, bio based nylon and, and and so on but I think those are still in the very early stage they they have a lot of uh, 
issues like price issues, availability of the yarns, uh, longer lead time, high minimums, and just just about everything. And then at the end, it's like they claim it's some of them. They say this is biodegradable, but uh, you probably need a uh, uh, industrial compost uh, supply chain for it. So how are you going to do that? And and it's just not, um, and, and, and then we see um, brands are limiting the numbers of, uh, the, the, the numbers of different yarns in the composition. So we are trying to limit to two or even one so that it will be easier to recycle or upcycle when it's uh, in the, towards the end of the life. Um, so, and, and there's also a lot of startups are starting uh, new um, sustainable materials. So I, I I, t- I tell people it's just now it's really like the golden age of uh, uh, development of uh, sustainable materials. So if you are entrepreneurs as, uh, like we ha- with an uh, idea with a, uh, some resources, you potentially you can do something really fun, interesting, and that's helpful. But I think uh, at the end, the, the sustainable material is still it's, I don't think there's a hundred percent sustainable material because you always use some energy, water, have some kind of waste. So, and there may be some kind of unintended consequences like when that material is in scale. So it's just a constant research and constant improvement. So it's, it's quite exciting. I, I, I kind of see this now as like the period where we invented nylon, polyester in those eras. Like, wow, there's so many new things out. It's, it's quite fun, I think. Uh, yeah. What if you were to place a bet on, like, when do you think um, will we ever get to a place where we'll have, let's say, over fifty percent of the materials that are going around in the text industry will be actually recycled or, you know, fully sustainable? I, I think recycled polyester will will can have because. Uh, the up the PEP, PET bottles, those water bottles, um, recycling of those is quite established in, in quite many different uh, places around the world. So it it has quite big of a volume to 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 uh, give it to the uh, the uh, the uh, textile industry. So I think that has a big uh, because anytime when you're doing a uh, uh, recycling recycled material the key is not the technology key is the source do you have enough waste uh is, is that waste is uh, consistent uh do you have enough um so far i see i think we have enough for now but i but i see is that the there are companies that are doing recycled bottles in uh, bottles into recycled bottles so this uh, closed bottles to bottles so potentially that's uh you can kind of say it's a competition to the uh, textile industry. So I, that could drive up the price or uh, harder to source for it. Or I, I don't know what could happen. It's, it's, but I can see that can happen some very soon. Rene, um, can you share a bit about your practices and, you know, have you been experimenting maybe with different kind of uh, materials? Uh, mm-hmm. What are your conclusions? What are you excited about right now? Like, how do you see it in the future? Yeah, sure. I love this uh, <clears throat> idea of that we're in this golden age. Uh, I, I agree with that. Like, I think of, um, you know, synthetic fabrics not being around really for that long and um, you know maybe like 60 70 years now right and in the spectrum of for how long humans have been wearing clothing like that's nothing and so I I like to try to imagine like okay if that never happened like where would we have taken you know natural fibers how would we have innovated with things instead of petroleum you know to, to make our clothing. So I feel like we're kind of there now. Uh, so I agree, um, you know, with Vincent that this is like an exciting time and there's will be a lot of, uh, you know, new things created right now, um, which is great. Uh, I guess f- for us, like just recognizing the kind of plastic problem that we're facing right now on the planet 
Um, we really steer away from using um, any any plastics in our garments um, and find that 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 um, yeah we don't want to make that problem any more worse than it than it is. So at, at the moment we're, we're we're sticking to natural natural fibers to build our products. Um, but but we need to you know <clears throat> we need to continue to innovate and 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 push things forward in in that area too. Um, we've been able to like look into the past at some fabrics that were used previously um, to start with, um, and then as, as Vincent mentioned, we're also looking into some like bio based nylons as well, but. Um, like he pointed out, there, there's there's challenges there as well, and it's it's unfortunate that it's not like so simple and clear cut with um, textiles. Like there's no like cotton's good and nylon's bad. You know, it's like it, it's not as easy as that. You actually do have to like dive in a little further and look at all the different you know touch points and things that are being impacted. So. Um, yeah, I wish it was like a little easier, like food, you know, where you could just be like, okay, I get what organic food is and I get what non-organic food is, or I get what GMO is or non-GMO. And it's just like a little, it, it seems at least a little easier than, than explaining, <laughs> you know, right. what, what nylon is. And there's so many different ways to make it. And yeah. But in the meantime, you can focus, you know, on what, on your own practices. And if there are people who... You know, again, given that you produce um, uh, quite a big variety of, of, of different uh, products, right? And you only, your, your brand, you have, uh, you know, for men and, and women and I think also for kids. Um, can you maybe share a bit more about your experience about, you know, what has been proven as a good organic or natural material, you know, for a specific type of uh uh, garment is there I mean you're, you're basically saying okay we, we don't yet have it's not so easy yet it's not so clear cut but maybe we can already see that you know certain textiles certain again natural textiles are only good for certain products is there something like that we can see as a guideline from your experience yeah I mean uh, <clears throat> we, we use a lot of wool and um I mean, for like the, the outdoor industry, as far as like, you know, breathable, uh, like keep you warm, keep, keep you cool, uh, temperature regulating, like doesn't get stinky. It's just like a, a, a miracle fiber. So, I mean, we've had like a lot of success in our products with that and, and we've tried it in some, you know, more or like, I guess, a little less traditional like uses and um yeah I, th I think there's a lot of like more room to grow with with wool as well i think we can we can push that side of things and um yeah i also i, I mean this is getting like outside of uh like fiber but uh, you know i just i love the possibilities with like flatbed knitting machines and just instead of like <clears throat> making fabric and then cutting it out and the amount of wastage you get from that just going straight from from yarn in, into the actual garment you know mm -hmm. that, that's definitely an area that that we've seen some some success and want to continue like making more garments in that in that fashion interesting yeah interesting okay so let's actually now go back to the synthetic uh, materials um, and Eleanor, maybe you can tell us a bit about, you know, your work, because again, it's, it's a bit tricky, right? Uh, as Renee was saying, we don't want to, if we call ourselves uh, a sustainable fashion textile activists, we kind of, we don't want to be the ones contributing more to the problem, however, the problem exists, right? There is the waste and, uh, and that's, I guess, something that motivated you to do what you do. So, um, Tell us, uh, well, first of all, you, you know, you developed basically your own uh, method, how to turn plastic into fabric. Um, is this something that, uh, you know, maybe you can even tell us a bit where it was in the beginning, where you are today? Have you changed your methods since you, you know, invented it in the first place? 
And what is your what are your plans in the future? Are you planning on continue working with with plastics, or are you planning on you know, adding other materials? How how do you see it? Okay, so uh, when we started, uh, I started alone uh, during my textile degree in Shankar. I started to develop to. Uh, it always interesting me uh, what can we do with uh, all the plastic materials that exist in our world. So I did a lot of experiments until I found found remnants. And uh, I I can tell that uh, then uh, we understand that the uh, factories here in Israel and also outside of Israel have a lot of uh, leftovers uh, that they uh, usually uh, downcycling it or sending it uh, to another country. And we understand that we can uh, make from uh, this is our treasure that we can make fabrics for the fashion industry. Actually, I I know that there is uh, also organic materials and plastic materials and. Uh, uh, I think it depends on the product that you want to produce. If you want a highly durable bag that is waterproof and uh, you want to get out uh, to, to do hiking with this, so you need a waterproof fabric. And if you want something that uh, you want to wear and it will need to be pleasant, so you want organic cotton. So uh, it depends on the product. Um, so the, our main challenge is to take uh, materials that uh, no one wants to use them uh, and take it to uh, another level and make it a, a interesting fabric, which is not uh, uh, really easy. But uh, when you put the, the main uh, goal inside your head, so you are doing everything to make it the most beautiful that people will look at this and we say, wow, I will think twice before I throw it again. Because it's only for, uh, we are producing today plastic for a single use uh, time. And uh, it's, very prob it's very problematic because we don't think, uh, we, we need to produce it, we are using it, it's very helpful for a few seconds, and then what? We have a lot of uh, plastic in our oceans and in, in our environment, it's a really big problem. So we are trying to solve this and to make it as beautiful as we can. And uh, so for now, you're only focusing also on, on plastic waste, or have you experimented also with other, with other synthetic waste? Right now, are, yeah. Yeah, right now we are focusing in a lot of different kinds of uh, synthetic and plastic waste and we are uh, keep developing this uh, this subject and these materials and uh, all the time uh, people come can, uh, bringing us new materials that uh, we want to uh, to find the answer what we can do with them and we are trying to do our best and to make more uh, fabrics for the, for the designers and uh, more products out of it. Okay. So we have only a few uh, minutes left. So I'm, uh, before I will uh, ask uh, some of the final questions, I'm just reminding that whoever has also a question or comment, uh, this is your opportunity. Um, and my question uh, is the following. Uh, so my organization, Refresh, we are very much about uh, creating uh, uh, or pr promoting circular economy in the textile industry. And we understand that in order to do that, you need to create collaborations. You need to, uh, you know, if you want to, uh, um, if you want to be able to create, or you know, if you if you have biodegradable materials or compostable materials, as Vincent mentioned, you need to have a compost right in your area, or you need, if you um, are like Eleanor, you want to work with uh, plastic waste, you need to have some kind of a system where you will be able to collect this waste or you know, and, and we'll be able to have a facility to work on it. So my question to the three of you also from the perspective of the different areas where you're living, um, if you were invited to, to a city hall meeting and you were able to tell, you know, the politicians um, and we would come in as an expert in circle economy, what would be your, um, you know, your vision? What would be your take? What, did, what does it mean? Um, you know, how can we install circular economy in, uh, in with the perspective of the textiles um, in order for you to be able to do what you want to do and to succeed with it? Um, let's do it the other round. Maybe Renee, you want to start first? So if I'm in a, in a town hall meeting, right? <clears throat> Uh, I, I mean, I suppose what the city could control, I'd, I'd ask them to, um, like they do, 
I don't know, they, at least they do this here is, is we all have these blue bins that we put certain things that can be recycled in. And I think you should be able to, if the clothing's hit like, you know, end of life, you should be able to put the, the clothing in there as well to get recycled so that they could handle that collection. The thing is there needs to then be a, a place to, that, that can recycle it. Um, we, we've been working with um, some material engineers at, at the University of British Columbia to find a new way to recycle cotton. Um, but that, but that's just one, that's just one fiber, you know. Um, so, yeah, I would say start like start collecting it now, and let's let's store this because um, w those solutions are gonna show up eventually here, um, and and then when they when they do, um, ideally, like in the future, we would no longer need to create any virgin any fiber you know like we wouldn't need to grow any new cotton because there's like more than enough like cotton out there already in the world that that we could repurpose or we wouldn't need to create any new nylon or or so forth so i think okay. the, the the process that that the cities could help with is starting in that that collection side of things while mm -hmm. while in other areas, businesses are trying to figure out how to actually recycle uh, those pieces. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. So basically, the message uh, is that um, obviously stop stop landfilling, stop incinerating. Right. That uh, try finding a way to store what we have already, because once the technology is ready, we'll be we'll we'll be able to use it. Yeah. Beautiful, Vincent. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Rene there. It's uh, we we need them to help us to like build those um, supply chain. It's it's right now I see is that um, brands and companies that are dealing with the textile weights and so on, costs and um, it's 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 a it's one of the major issue transportation costs. And, and and the sorting and the recycling the, the actual costs it's it's, it's yeah, actually, it's it's quite big, and and just I think we just to a point for that um, some of our clothing are just so cheap now. It's just that if you want to recycle them or turn them into new new material, it's it's just costs so much. So it's it's economically it doesn't make sense, and and so if um, can store them, and then we can have technology that can really. Uh, improve these things I think it's uh, it, it would really help yeah and I think also there's a lot of um, consumer awareness side that needs to be done to to okay if you buy just wear more and then if you don't want it don't throw in the trash can just find a place that you know that it's, it's trustworthy that they can give it a second life or something you know I, I think it's hard to tell people not to buy clothes. I think it's it's really hard, but okay, just let's see how we can make it uh, through awareness, education, we can see, okay, there's a lot of usage for these uh, clothes that you don't want, yeah. Okay, Eleanor, what would, what would you like to see the city in the 40s, you know, to do in order to advance your work? So I uh, first of all agree with my friends here. It's very important to sort the, the materials and to uh, collect it uh, to different kinds because it, this is the first stage. And um, then I think uh, everyone need a little uh, to take a little responsibility about uh, everyone need uh, uh, to take a little responsibility on on it uh, on himself and to um, to find a way to. Uh, if you don't use the, the the product or the material, you need to give it back to a pe to a person that uh, really can uh, uh, do something out of it instead of throwing it uh, like the mask of the uh, COVID-19 now uh, that uh, we found on the floor and everything. So if we have different recycle bins for each uh, or most of the the raw materials, it could be wonderful. 
Okay, so last question to all of you, just one uh, quick minute, just to tell us about how do you see the, fa the future of the fashion industry? Um, I guess, uh, you know, like um, the, the mix between how you would want it to be and how you think the fashion industry will look like in the next five years. Who wants to... Uh, um, I can start. Sure. So I believe uh, I believe slow fashion will take uh, place, and also, uh, like I said, the design will be very important and high quality and uh, uh, luxury product. Like they say, people uh, will want to uh, to buy product that will last more years and not changing every uh, few I don't know every year uh, different products. Uh, it will be more important and valuable. Valuable. Um, and uh, I think people need to understand that uh, if they are investing money in one product, it's, uh, it's better that it will last for years and not uh, uh, changing it and sewing it uh, after one year. Because it's really shame. Sure. Okay. Renee, would you like to give us your take? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I, uh, where, like where I hope it is and where I think it will be or are unfortunately two different things, but I, you know, I, I riffing on um, what, what uh, Vincent was saying there as well. Like the, the, I'm hoping awareness is even f like much further along than, than it is right now. Um, I definitely think there needs to be like a reset in the valuation of clothing. Like it, the, 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 price in like the consumer's mind has been driven down like way way too low and so it, it, it makes it as Vincent was touching on really hard to 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 like when when you're like okay I we can sell a jacket for like a hundred dollars it's like that 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 doesn't like financially make sense for enough of the people that like need to produce that product to then also like have this recycling process behind it so we need we need consumers to understand that this is like you know a very skilled like thing making making clothing and it needs to be valued as such um so to me i hope that that's the like the biggest shift happens on the on the consumer side of things um and then I guess, yeah, I'd lo love to see people thinking of it more as like a little more utilitarian, less like mm -hmm. fashion and, and, and how I look and more like, okay, I, it's cold outside today. I just need something to keep me warm or, uh, and that people are like wearing the same thing like day after day and not putting it into the laundry every, like after one, one wash or, yeah. So yeah, the biggest shift I'm hoping for is on the consumer side of things. Um, and then, yeah, ideally taking out any um, use of, of uh, plastic fibers um, to, to make our garments. Um, I think that that's, uh, you know, the, the plastic problem's huge right now. We, if we turn it into clothing uh, and then it, 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 like the, the, the micro one is like the most difficult one to solve. You know, you're like, oh, I can see that plastic bottle. I can pick it up. But like the little bits that we're like breathing, like right now, like in this last hour, the amount of plastic that we just breathed in from our clothing is crazy. Like the being found in like water and honey. And like, it, it's really like a, a very like massive, uh, problem that we're facing right now and um so sure. I, ideally I'm, I, I know i know the government here has been like working on that a bit too because yeah. they recognize that as a huge problem um but yeah. I, I hope i hope that people step up and and we can eliminate that from the supply chain absolutely vincent last you get to be the last uh yeah, I think that in the next five, six years, it will be the industry will change really fast, move very fast for for the first time. I think I, I can see so many digital digitization things are happening, and I see the the sustainability, sustainable living, wellness living, this kind of new um, living uh, lifestyle consumer 
cultural lifestyle it's it's going to take center stage uh, it's it's um but it's it's so it has to move fast i think i think for brands for manufacturers for material for any, anyone that is in this in this uh, uh industry or you know, related to industry has to move fast i think COVID really are, are making some kind of permanent shifts i i think to in in the west are, are to to a certain extent the west will move probably move faster than china in in that sense of how the whole industry is shifting because of the, the um it's just how the covid is so hard to contain so i think that that it's it's going to have a major effect so just have to move fast move more into digital side uh um brands need to really think of new new products that for different uh uh, uh scenarios uh, uh places that where we 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 will use uh we'll wear these clothes at um so it's it's fast and it's exciting but it's also i think it's a bit scary <laughs> so many unknowns <laughs> true yeah Okay, mm-hmm. well, it's uh, it's I, I think there couldn't be a better summary sum up than what you just said. It's it is uh, it is certainly there's a lot of unknown. Uh, maybe there's been never so much unknown. Never, mm-hmm. you know, definitely in modern history. Um, and uh, of course, everything will have a direct impact on the fashion industry, just as it had. Um, but there's also a lot of excitement around being able to actually bring up on change and this is what you guys are doing so uh i just want to wish you really success continuing what you're doing hopefully also uh collaborating and and maybe more people will want to um to join forces um and truly disrupt the fashion industry because um you know, if this is not a, an amazing chance to, to do something, then what is, right? So, um, mm-hmm. so good luck, everyone. And thanks a lot for sharing. And uh, hopefully we'll meet again, even in less than five years and see the progress that everyone made. Thank you. Awesome. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.